The chair will call this meeting to order. We get item number one, which is the approval of minutes. We did get we we got all these because I read them. I, we got yeah. we got them all now. Yep. Yeah. So we get the 19th, the 26th, and the 3rd. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of both the 19th and the 26th. Oh. And the 3rd. Yeah. And the 3rd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three of them? Yeah, we yeah, had three. Yeah, they, were, they were quite lost count, yeah. <laughs> quite large. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move this motion and been moved and seconded. Any changes or amendments to the minutes? No, I didn't see any. Okay, not hearing any. All those favor adoption. Get the same guy. All right. All right. Those opposed, the vote should end. Item number two is authorized and signed a $30,000 grant uh, for the VAWA program. Uh, this is something we have on an annual basis. Sorry. Yeah. It's a little more too, Mr. Chairman. Could Diane explain yeah. it to you this time? So sure. we'll, we'll have. Yeah. So it's for it's, our uh, PB unit prosecutor. Uh, we've been receiving thirty thousand dollars a year for a long time. Right. It hasn't changed. It hasn't increased. Yeah. Uh, so it funds part of oh, yes, a okay. salary for the DB unit prosecutor. So it's in the amount of thirty thousand dollars, and if you authorize, yeah, I but have... this time was just a little more. I mean, we had a, a an audit this time. Oh well, That's yeah. There's a monitoring. Understand. There's a monitoring every year for all of our grants. So uh, the grant manager came in, um, spoke with Emily, uh, interviewed uh, the, the DB unit prosecutor, Chris Jones. Um, and then they come up to see me with regards to the financial and, um, yeah, everything went well. So we need to add a word. Um, oh. we need to add a word to our, um, um, all of our policies, all of our policies, but we'll, we'll do that over time. Yeah. And, and what it is, is we have to, and, uh, our personnel policies, any um, operating procedures or whatnot that have to do with our grants, um, we need, you know, because we include that we do not discriminate based on right. race, sexual orientation, religious, you know, affiliation. We have to include gender identity in all of that. So, so that's um, um, that's the first time this is obviously yeah. came up. So. Yeah. I figure, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with you, we'll just do that as we run across those because it's going to be in. I mean, obviously, the the more notable places in our personnel policies, but right. we'll uh, pick it up in other areas as as we go. Okay. We still discriminate against Greeks and we'll get that in there. And that's just <laughs> that's reserved for you, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Special clause. Special clause. <laughs> All right. All right. So I get a motion to authorize and accept the grant. So moved. All right. Okay. So, so all those in favor of adoption, favor of aye. Aye. All those opposed, vote unanimous. Good. So there'll be uh, this whole document for you to sign. Uh, uh, the cover page, page will be for the three of you to sign, and we can go over that after yeah, if you want, because yeah. there's quite a bit. Yeah. These um, grant documents are getting larger every mm -hmm. year. <laughs> and these are the ones you have to initial the page. You know, every page, 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 page multiple yeah. signatures. So. Yeah. All right. Item three is to discuss Riverside Rest Homes uh, star rating. Mr. Bauer. Please, Mr. Chairman, um, we're one of seven facilities in the state of New Hampshire that is a five-star rated nursing home. Um, just a little background. It certainly has nothing to do with the appearance or the or the amenities, fortunately, um, but it has to do uh, with uh, three factors. It has to do with staffing, um, has to uh, primarily do with survey results, and it's averaged. In, it's on a three-year basis. Um, the, obviously, the current year holds more weight than the prior year than the prior year, and then when the next survey comes, the what what was the fourth year is not is dropped off. So, um, well, uh, congratulations to the staff. It's it's the staff. It's it's um, you know has done a has done a great job in trying times because as you know we. Um, really don't refuse any admissions to Riverside. Uh, we, we take people as we uh, 
uh, as we can. And um, you know, the staff's done a really great job at, at, at caring for them because that's that's where the judgment lies right. is is with the staff. So, and the um, I think the only other county home that's five stars is Rocky Hens because I was there for as you know almost three months um, while they sought out an administrator. So. They're um, um, also a five-star facility. Well, that's a, a great testament to the staff and the conditions they're working in. I don't, I don't think people have a true appreciation for the type of people that we get. You know, I, I just don't think that I need. Mean, and the people are wonderful. They're they're just sick. They're just sick, right? And right. and they, you know they they. Some have been sick their whole lives. Some have been sick, you know, later in life. Some are young. Yeah. Um, so we and and the diseases are are everything imaginable. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't think that, that that people have a true appreciation of what we deal with. And the fact that a lot of other uh, that the, the private nursing homes rely on us to help them in the partnership because they'd be stuck with tremendous expenses. Well, the other thing is, is that we really only have one true private pay resident. Right. Uh, um, we have other residents that are that are what in the industry is called spend downs, which are people that have a certain amount over the Medicaid limit, but not. It doesn't take them long to spend that down and right. then qualify for Medicaid, and then we help them get on Medicaid. But right now, I only have one true right. private pay resident yeah. that, you know, could pay privately indefinitely. Well, congratulations again for the staff for a job well done. And it reflects well on accounting operation. Thank you very for your leadership over there. Mm -hmm. It's really the staff, but, but I'll pass along your... Yeah. Your congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's good news. All right, item four, we got these upcoming events. Uh, and uh, item five, we got any older new business we need to discuss? With anybody? Yes, we do. We have some need to talk. Um, so, we received. Um, an email from Elizabeth McKenna uh, of um, Jean Shaheen's office, and it was with regards to FEMA funding that has been at three billion dollars uh, of FEMA funding that has been made available to states and local communities, and it's for hazard mitigation. And so, the New Hampshire Municipal Association was. Um, uh, they were hosting a workshop uh, on Monday. So I jumped on that uh, Zoom call. And yeah, th there is a lot of money available to the state through that. And from what I could gather with this workshop, the three areas that we would be able to, to seek funding for would be one, um, generators. Um, so, uh, that is actually like a separate category. Um, so there's money there. Um, there's money for, um, you know, mitigation of, um, uh, any damage due to flooding. Right, so right. we have those areas on our complex that, um, you know, we had that problem with this side of the building. Mm -hmm looking to do some mitigation on the other side right. of the building and right. there are other areas i guess that are are prone so there's money available for that and then there's some uh, money for um alternative energy as well uh that's part of it and it's two part because part of it is to reduce the carbon carbon footprint to you know try to you know uh have some impact on the climate change that's causing all of these, you know, uh, event, uh, web, you know, weather events, and then also um, having alternative power 
you know, when we do lose power, having alternative power um, as well. So, um, so what's the, who, are we going to assign somebody to look at this? Uh, well, it's, there's it's, a couple of steps that I think we can yeah. do before we, before we might need to engage. Yeah. It's a little confusing. So what we, the first step is November 8th is the deadline to file a letter of intent oh, okay. form. I'll just say so I went online. So we can do that. I downloaded yeah. the form okay. uh, and, you know, I did like a, a draft of what uh, there I, I need, would need a little bit more help with descriptions. Yeah. But, um, so, you know, I, I sent it to Ray and selected like the area for the generators, um, the solar energy, and then, you know, the mitigation for flooding. So that would have to be filed by November 8th. That's not a problem. That deadline's not a problem. Um, the funding, they're going to be rolling out the 2024 funding, they said, within a week or two. And so that would be the funding that we would be looking at. The application would probably be due sometime in February. That, you know, they're still waiting for it to roll out. But in the past, that's how it, that's been the timeline. And... The thing is, with February, in order to, before you apply, you have to have a hazard mitigation plan approved by the state before you can apply. So I reached out to Stratford Regional Planning because that's what they do and um, heard back from Blair Haney. And Blair is the individual that helped us with the CDBG grant for the uh, warming shelter a few years ago right. when we received CDBG COVID funding. So I contacted him and, um, you know, the answer that I got back from him was there are no other counties that have, that have a hazard mitigation plan that we could refer to, but just because we would be the first one, you know, that's not, a, that's not a problem for us, but it takes time to get it done. Um, and he said the timeline would be that's really, yeah, really short window. tight, but he said it's not impossible. But then there, there's also Is it competitive, you know, the the grant yeah. ultimately the grants will be competitive, but but we can because the and he said to contact and I'm waiting to get contact information from Blair of somebody at the state because he said the other option would possibly be. Um, applying for the money through the state's hazard mitigation plans. So if I don't hear back today, I will, I'll find somebody and, start, you know, I'll make phone calls and whatnot. Uh, the real was Perry Thomas still in charge of humor in the mansion. I'm just curious. Where did I hear his name recently? Was... Go over the uh, interim part. Yeah, I know he's interim part, yeah. I don't know if he was I, I don't think so. Um, I, we do have, we can reach out to the person who sponsored the, the webinar, um, you know, if we need to. We're, we're just trying to, you know, piece together. Um, I th the reason I want, we thought we'd put it on an agenda with such preliminary information is you remember the generators are one of the things that we s cut out of uh, the, the multi-year right. plan. You know, we do, we didn't cut it out. No, we we just deferred it for a later time. Right. So this might be a good situation for us time wise. You remember, we have a full plan. I don't know. You know, we have a full plan by an expert company. So you know that part, which would kind of probably be the tail end of a lot of the things. We actually have that done. So it's the it's the hazard mitigation part that, that we have to figure out. And and the state's the one that approves the hazard mitigation part. So if we can just, you know, get some somebody to reach at the state and and ask them a few more questions, you know, we we could be in fine shape to um, to make some application for this. But so, it might not be a bad idea. Because this money comes around, maybe not in that amount, but look at the storms that we've dealt with in the South the last two weeks. This is not, this problem's not going away. So there's going to be more money and maybe 
we should pursue a hazardous mitigation plan of our own, you know, and maybe we can't get it done for this round. Maybe there's another route we can take, but for the future that we can always, you know, have you the know, ability to apply really. for money. Yeah, the other part that's good here is is that obviously we have the history. I mean, you know, we've, you know, the two of us, you know, Georgia, been here, you know, seventy five years combined, and, and uh, <laughs> um, so I mean, it's it's not like something we haven't gone through, True, right? You know, and I'm talking the Mother's Day floods out back, yeah. you know, Corn through the through the cornfield, ice storms, power loss. You know, one of the things we ought to look at, and I was going to bring it up, but I decided not to because it, we just didn't have enough money. But with the generators, if if there was a potential for us to get federal money, um, we should really think seriously. Maybe we could have, we could have Doug look at this, okay? Um, is to convert them all to natural gas. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I think um, I, I know we haven't looked at it simply because of the money. You know, right. we we wanted to do it as economically as possible. Right. And um, but well, natural gas. But I, I'm relative. I'm I'm just pretty confident pretty that the company that we paid all those years ago to do yeah. that whole kind of swapping around of right. generators and and. I'm I'm pretty confident that that company you know could easily equate right the, 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 a changeover a changeover yeah. the only thing that we do need and we do need to continue in the twenty third meet the October twenty third meeting of the delegation is we can't wait on that transfer switch yeah I know that. somebody's going to die yeah. you know because uh, we can't. Manage yeah, that transfer switch. It, well, the it, transfer switch has really got nothing to do with how you generate the electricity. I, I agree, but it's it's attached to the generator. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it, it would be something that if you bought a new generator, a transfer switch would come with it. Probably come with it. And so, you know, that's that's one thing that we need to pursue. But um, and we left it in in the in the in the plan. You know, for for an absolute safety aspect, and we can't have half the house of correction in the dark um you know when the power goes out without really the ability to um we still got the temporary generators running over there so. I don't know why well we actually just i think the radiator just came in Did it? yeah okay. we paid fifteen thousand dollars for the temporary generator to to run the place and and the uh we just found the radiator because as you know yeah. they, didn't they didn't make them anymore uh, so we we had to locate one. Um, I think it actually had to be built, didn't it? Didn't have to be built. They couldn't find one. I think it had to be built. That's why it was such a duration of time. But anyway, we um, we that generator should be up and running pretty soon, um, and and then we can stop paying for the rental that we that we obviously yeah. needed to have. I mean, you can't run a jail in the dark. Um, well, this if this company is still around, why don't we why don't we just reach out to them and talk and ask them to do it? I'll I'll pull the report, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'll reach out and yeah. and I'll work with Dougie to uh, reach out and and um, um, because you know if we have an ice storm that lasts any more than a few days, those guys are going to be hustling. It's not it's not so much that they have to work overtime and all that other stuff. It's the fact that Selkirk down in, down in Newington. When we have those problems, they can't pump. They can't, they can't pump oil. Either. They can't pump oil. Okay, and that's that's always been a, the threat here. And we, and we, and we do, and they don't want you to store a lot of fuel on site because you have to have a dike. You got to do all these other. You got to meet all these other environmental and, issues. And, and every and plus we have to have it tested. Tested every 10 years. Stale, and then, yeah, it goes stale. You got other issues, but if they were all natural gas, you just turn the switch on. And, most of the things are not. It's all under pressure. It's different. It's a different. It's a different deal. I'll I'll um I'll I'll grab the report and I mean, we're really thinking about the future and doing and making our lives a lot less. Well, especially if somebody yeah. else will pay for it, right? Especially if the feds would pay for it, you know. Yeah. I suppose it wouldn't really hurt for them to update the report anyway, because it's several years old. So yeah. we could probably do that simultaneously. Yeah. So that's one thing. 
Okay. Um, thing number two is, I don't know, maybe as long as I've been here, I shouldn't be surprised by things anymore. But um, at the recommendation of, of um, one of our local state senators, we submitted a ARPA request for to do the roof. Now, remember, in January of 2024, right. when we lost the $15.6 million on nursing home, we immediately applied for ARPA funds for the air exchange, exchange. figuring, hey, it's only 10%, you know, the they, order. they right. might, you know, for the change, change order. Order. Right. you know, it's only 10%. They might feel good about giving it to us because, you know, they felt bad when we couldn't execute the, um, um, the $15 million. Well, they denied that right along. Um, and then I got a call um, and the indication was to apply for the roof. You know, the, you know, the roof was as a result, mostly as a result of the fact that we had to put all that steel and right. sink through the membrane, the membrane. And, and all that stuff. It, it, it From the last email I got, there is a, well, we sent an email to go for, uh, not an email, well, it was an email, right. but it, it outlined everything. They immediately sent us an email back saying, no, the money's gone. Right. Then I got a call uh, to send that same email. So we sent both emails, the one from January and the one that we were asked to generate recently. We sent them both uh, to a gentleman from the state who I had never heard of. Um, Jerry. Yeah, he's, he's apparently some kind of finance director for the state. And I, I've never met the gentleman. Um, and we recently heard that uh, I got a call from Tom Broderick, who's the head of Gopher. Uh, he asked Diane questions, and then he asked me questions, um, and he said he'd get back to me. Um, so there is a possibility that they would fund the roof, which, interestingly enough, is the same yeah. Amount as the as the change order as the change order. I think he thought they were the same thing because the the amounts were the same. I think that it produced a little bit of confusion. So so I, we straightened out the confusion and and uh, we understand or uh, if it gets through whatever, whatever their process is, it'll be shepherded through by our local state senator and. Um, an executive counselor. So I'm, um, I, I can't guarantee that. Um, I hope to hear prior to the 23rd. Um, and, and we'll see how it goes from there. I don't think it'll be finalized before the 23rd. He asked me specifically, uh, and this is something that uh, uh, you all need to think about, he asked me specifically if we could have a contract in place by December 31st, and that's yeah. not a problem. Yeah. Um, the question will be how late in the process do we know that the funding is confirmed, and then will we have time to go out to bid, or do we accept the bid that we have? Yeah. Um, and I don't know that answer. You know, we have a pretty thorough bid with pictures and, right. and everything. So I think it, a lot of it depends on timing. when on timing. Yeah. Um, you know, my hope is that if we don't hear by the 23rd, we've worded the bond that will be presented to the delegation and that allows us to accept money to, right. Offset, right. The, to, offset, the uh, to offset the bond. Yeah. So um, this way, if we don't hear by the 23rd, um, uh, but the bond's approved. We know the money's approved one way or the other. We hope it's our funds, you know, that we heard through Gopher. But that would then give us time to go out to bid, you know, for like a four-week bid. Um, and, uh, you know, 
sign a contract sometime at uh, perhaps at the right, beginning of contract the contract signing. They're buggling the, the roof. It was if it's in the middle of January. That no, but no, it's, it's the contract. It's the contract. That's, that's all he's yeah, interested in is the contract. The so I think we'd have time to have the contract signed by the beginning of December, and that would meet all of the gopher requirements. So um, I, I know that you know we we said to the delegation that we were going to go out to bid for all these items, and I'd certainly like to do that. But I don't want to do it at the risk of losing funding because we haven't met timelines. Well, they may, they may, they may just fund the change order. Then. Who knows? You don't know. What I su I suggested that. Um, however, that doesn't seem to be the way this is this process is moving. No. So I'm waiting to hear from uh, uh, Tom Broderick uh, and. Um, I did ask him that question. So did what I. What does it matter if it's the change order or if it's the lease replacement? Right. I, yeah, I'm not. It's the same amount of money. It's the same, it's money. The same amount of money. It's the, exact, it's the exact same amount of money. Right. And, and it must have he indicated to me that there, there is um, powers above him that make these decisions, mm -hmm. was what he said to me. Yeah. I said, okay, thank you. And I just let yeah. it go. Uh, because I knew uh, Diane had told me about her conversation with him, and we knew it was, but I had to ask that question. I, I just couldn't yeah. let it go. Uh, it would certainly be much less complicated. Uh, well, but, they, they, they may they may just, oh, well, hopefully it would be great if they would come up with a 1.4, and then after then we could tell them it would be easier on their end. It would make it easier for them to, just to do the, the change work. Well, yeah, they just have so many rules and, yeah, and so many of, so many rules with our and, and there's a lot of hands in this right now. So yeah, everybody's got their paws. Yeah. Um, Can you just clarify? I understand the roof replacement, but you guys keep mentioning the change order, and it's just not you know, got okay. with me. So can you just like sentence or two? <laughs> change order is for the actual air handling systems that are all, that are being yeah. put in on the roof. Yeah. Okay, there was a, a major change order that had to happen as a result of the weight of the new units that we couldn't repair the old units because we couldn't buy parts, which was what which is what we've been doing for a long time. And in order to change the air in the building to meet the standards that the court required required, required these huge change mm -hmm. orders. Because the, the units that we had to put up there in order to meet the the CFM, which is the cubic feet per minute. Air, air exchange in the building had to re require larger units. The roof couldn't hold the units. wasn't constructed for that purpose. So we had to have... And the, and the balance of the change order was the requirements by the city of Dover for how we managed the air movement in the cafeteria. Area. Right. So those are the two change orders. It comes out to... 1.397. Yeah, so we just called it 1.4, but it's actually like 1.397 and right. change. So then what happened was they had to penetrate the roof to tie into the structural steel that holds the building up in order to build a grid. They had to build a grid on top of the roof, steel grid that had to be, that had to be uh, custom made in order to support the weights of the units based on the size that they had to be, which for that wall all wasn't anticipated um, when we started down the path but the worst step in yes, after that it's up in the path that's what we're doing so we're we're um, those are just some updates um, about well I'm, so I, I'm hopeful that we can get the money i mean that's you know that's not the best of property taxpayers from having to support it so that's a good thing one way or another it's a good thing we can, it, it, if we can get something yeah. And and I was, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic based on the information that I've received yeah. from yeah. The, the two different, you know, the two different sources. sources. Yeah. I I guess I didn't realize. I thought Gopher operated as an independent entity, um, you know, that that ultimately made recommendations that were approved by governor and council, but apparently that's incorrect. That. Yeah. Well, they sent us a letter telling us. Well, right. they sent us a letter telling us there's no money available. <laughs> right. Pursue other sources. Yeah, right. Exactly. And and within within what a couple hours after we sent, we were told yeah. to send the request. Right. Within two hours, we got an answer yeah. back from Gopher that says, "Oh yeah. no, no." Yeah. 
and then then I get a phone call, and as you know, because uh, right. you, I answered the call. With, you guys were here, right. um, and and then this has been developing in over that last week. So I hope I, it I develops and, uh, and completely by the twenty third. And if it does, we could simply cut that cut out. That out, right? Cut that right out of the request. Yeah, um, uh, that's that's my hope. That would be nice. Either way, we'll just have to wait. Well, my hope is it just be cleaner, neater, and easier to cut it right out of the request if if right. we knew that if we had a signed contract with Gopher. Right. Yeah. Well, it's still good news if we get it. Yes, sir. And the other this FEMA thing, you know, I mean, based on what's going on in Florida, I don't know, three billion dollars or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Fuck it. It, yeah. it really. But that may yeah. be a separate authorization by the president. Could be a separate authorization. Well, this is for it's it's um this three billion dollars is for building it's called brick building resilient infrastructure and communities. Another, so, another <laughs> acronym, yes. Another one. Another one. Yeah, I'm gonna get on the phone and find a contact person. Right. That's the biggest thing is is, is is finding the person that's finding the person. person, right? Well, you know, the state just keeps changing personnel. Uh, I'll give you an example <laughs> here, and this is embarrassing. Um, you'll notice when Diane's printed a draft of the third quarter budget, and one of it's not a significant line item, it's in fact, it's quite a small line item, but you know, we are involved. In by statute in paying for autopsies right. and, and views. Yeah. Well, it's way underspent. Um, and and thank goodness. Uh, well, yeah. well, if it was true, it would be thank goodness. <laughs> so we've only received five. We, we usually get bills monthly, and we only received five bills. So, so I called Diane. She said we only received five bills. Yeah. Okay. So, because we've only received five bills, we called the county attorney's office. Who oh, brought, speak at the speak county, at the county attorney's here. office. So, we, we reached out to the county attorney's office, and I have to tell you, they're excellent at, at bill processing. You know, they're, they're just right on, right on the stick. Oh, Katie, yeah. Yeah, Katie's just right on the stick at processing. And, and so, Katie called for us. And they're searching for somebody to do their billing. They haven't billed us since May. Uh, for autopsies. For autopsies oh, and, views, yeah. and views. So that's why we're underspent. But I mean, that's why, you know, that's just another reason of why, you know, the revenue comes in so, right. yes. so slow. Right. Because they don't have anybody to process, process. these Medicaid claims. Right. Right. So, you know, we're hundreds of thousands of dollars behind in... Yeah. in it was over. And what's owed to us at, I swear at it's Riverside? At every department, that yeah. whether it's the DOJ or DHHS. And uh, you know the the other interesting part, and we'll now shift to the federal government. When we bill for uh, inmates, yeah. the bills have to be perfect. So if they're they can't cross it out and write in a different name, they send it back to you. Okay, and there's sometimes there's confusion between whether someone is a U.S. Marshal inmate or an immigration inmate. You know, and sometimes they agree to swap over, oh, between but don't states. tell us. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, right. don't tell us uh, in a timely basis. So if somebody shows up on somebody else's oh, bill, great it, it had, the bill has to be sent back, redone. It, they can't be just crossed out. Yeah. Sent back, redone, and sent. So you're talking, you know, sixty. Right. Not, two bills that have to be redone. Yeah, because if immigration right. says no, this no, is a U.S. Marshal prisoner. Right. That means that the immigration bill is wrong, and the U.S. Marshal. And then, then they turn around and they'll argue amongst them. Yeah. Okay. And and we're bill. caught in the middle. Yeah. So sometimes it's you know seventy five days, seventy five ninety days before we get paid. We uh, actually um, we get. Federal money quicker than we get state money. Other than the Bureau of Prisons. <laughs> yeah, Bureau of Prisons, we were behind a year. We yeah. were at one yes. point. At one point. Kind of point. Yeah, that's. They're yeah. only a, uh, like a quarter behind now or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's money in the bank, why. so to speak. It's like almost it's like if, if Sandy yeah, doesn't, it. or yeah. you don't get on the horn with them, they're not going to pay us. So. Yeah. We do generate a bill um, to the, the federal agencies within five days of the start of the new month. Um, and sometimes it's within three days. In fact, the, the, even though, you know, Sandy's been medically frail, um, she came in that day to generate the bill. Um, and she's been pretty much, she's working all this week. So, but anyway, yeah, she came in that Wednesday to generate the bill. So but the bill gets generated at the beginning of the month. Usually by the end of the month for the boarding, other than Bureau of Prisons, we have our money by the end of the month. We That's not the case with the state. And I'll give you an example. Um, Carrie bills for the drug court reimbursement yeah. every quarter, and she does that. I mean, it's the first, the, the it's the end of the quarter. She's asking for the numbers so she can do the bill. Within two days, the bill submitted. So she would have submitted that at the beginning of July. I just got the payment. For the second quarter, so they're three. And we're three, already in, three and a half months late. We're in the fourth quarter. This, it, it, I, it, well, look how long it took to get the one point four million dollars, and, 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 and that was over a year. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. Well, yeah, it is what it is. All right, you have all the new business then. No, no more good news and the money coming from all out of trees. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I wish it were fun. Diane and I were are doing the best we can with that. All right, I have six questions or comments from the public. Will they do the agenda? Anybody get any questions? Do you have any? Can I say something? Please. Okay. Um it was reported in Foster's um last night or today um that our ex sheriff has been indicted um, for five more charges. Um, yeah. and one of them was with regard to being compensated. I know that you cannot say basically anything, um, but I know we had the discussion that the, the money that was charged on the credit card, if he was found guilty, that that would be reimbursed through our insurance. And I'm just wondering if he's found guilty of fraudulent. Um, and I might not be using the correct terms, um, falsification of um, receiving compensation for his employment here. Is that covered under insurance, or is that something that um, we're just never going to get back? Well, uh, two things. I, I've had conversations with the Attorney General's office. Um, it's certainly going to be ordered as part of his order, right. presuming he's found guilty. Okay, I, I always like to say that because he's not been found guilty of anything. <laughs> That's right. So presuming he's found guilty, um, and that you're correct, that's one of the new charges, is that $19,000 that he was paid when he was on administrative leave when he actually didn't have any right to be paid because he didn't live in, in New Hampshire. Well, he didn't live in the county, he didn't even live in New Hampshire. So that is um, part of it. Now... I have not had the discussion with Primex yet, but my sense is if he's convicted of that, or if that's if there's a plea or part of it, we will get reimbursed. Right. So it'll be not only the nineteen, but I the other nineteen. So. Right. Well, right. but there's more than that. There's right. benefits, benefits too. Yeah. So that would be added on to the other uh, to the nineteen. It's not just salary; it's benefits and. There's a whole nother question about benefits. Um, like New Hampshire retirement system benefits? Yes. And medical and health insurance. And health insurance. And health insurance. Yes. So we would, health what health we would health have health to health do is, is uh, um, the Attorney General hasn't asked us for this yet. But, but, have it ready. but we'll have it ready. Uh, Diane's the expert at doing this because she does it for all the grants that we apply for. So we would get the total cost from when he went out on um, paid administrative leave and the insurance that we paid, the retirement that we paid, um, and any other, the other benefits tend to be minor, like unemployment and, and right. that kind of stuff, right. but still. But the, it is some big ticket items there that yes, collectively we, it adds up. It, absolutely, absolutely. So the answer was yes. 
longer answer than what you. <laughs> no, no, I just the way my brain works. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I did have an opportunity to pick the brain of the county of the attorney general a couple a couple weekends ago. <laughs> All righty. Is that it for questions and comments? Okay. And item seven is to move it around public, discuss personal and contract negotiation. Mm -hmm. That's good. We're required to roll call, Commissioner Watson. Yeah. Commissioner Roll. Yes. Myself, yes, that votes unanimous. Okay, the commission then will retire to non public session. We thank you all for being here this morning. Oh.